Welcome, Strategy Balgos, to the GBHL YouTube video. You're here with your host, GBHL Damien. And GBHL Tom. And we are here with a very exciting video for us. Mm -hmm. It is our announcement video for SPG issue two. Yes. Woo! We made it. Yeah, we did. Well, I mean, we actually made it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a second that one. That joke has been <laughs> six months in the making. Mm -hmm. We've been waiting for that. That's yeah. why we did the second one, to yeah. make that joke. Yeah. Laugh. Um, yeah, uh, you may you may have read this. <laughs> I don't know, possibly mm -hmm. not. But this is uh, issue one of our fantasy that we published in September last year, yes. I believe. Right. And um, we were we didn't know how people were going to react. We didn't know if people were going to like it or not. We hoped they would, and we are thrilled to say people loved it. So thank yes. you so so much. Yeah, thank you for all your feedback, and um, and thank you for those who donated um, or got a physical copy. Indeed, and it. The support of you guys allowed us to make issue two, yes. and here it here it now lies, as it were. Um, so yeah, we it, for, like, thank you from us to be honest to begin with, because this this one wouldn't exist without the response of you guys to the last one. So yes. thank you so much. Um, it's been great. So just for those, if you're watching and don't know what it is, Damien, a one minute summary of what SBG is. One minute. Well, that seems very long. It's a middle okay, of the fancy, by the fans, for the fans. <laughs> it is a 48 page, full colour um, SBG fanzine um, designed to give you, hopefully, an enjoyable and informative hobby resource, um, all based around Lord of the Rings and SBG. Yeah, it's the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit strategy battle game. Uh, we don't have War of the Ring um, stuff in there. No, we don't. At the moment. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. And the idea is, our driving idea behind it was to create a physical magazine that you would sit down and enjoy with a cup of tea. And we are delighted to say, one of the most exciting things for me was when, when we did this, mm. and there were two of them. Mm. No, that, was, that was pretty cool. Collection. Yeah, start of a collection. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what the magazine is. Is that everything? that cover everything you think? Right. Yeah. About what it is? Yeah. So um, yeah, it, this one took us seven months. Um, we. We kind of optimistically said we thought it'd take about six. Yes. And it took seven, which I'm pretty happy with, to be honest. <coughs> I mean, basically, we set ourselves the deadlines both times for issue one and two for the big Stockport events run by our co presenters, Jeremy well, James. Jeremy James. Absolutely. Um, and we managed to hit it just. Yes. <laughs> Again. It's been tough both times, the, yeah. the run up. We felt like we were very much on top of things about two months before, and then the last. A few weeks it's always before. that last bit that's well, horrendous. horrific. Just reading through twenty-two thousand words, every single one. All of them great. Yeah, <laughs> great words. But imagine that when you change it for its grammar or whatever, or because it sounds better in other way, that then moves everything, everything in the magazine. Well, everything on that spread, the, that article anyway. So it's an absolute nightmare. Indeed. But yeah, it's out, and we've been dropping um, hints and teasers and everything about it, and we now obviously, it's out there in the world, people have copies of it, but issue two, as you can hopefully see, is themed around the Dimrill Dale, the Battle yep. of Azanal Bazaar. Um, primarily, we had a couple of reasons we wanted to theme this around the Battle of Azanal Bazaar. The first was that I could never really remember how to say the Battle of Azanal Bazaar, <laughs> and I thought the only way I'm ever going to learn this is if I spend seven months of my life writing it and saying it over and over again. And it's worked, because now the Battle of Azanal Bazaar, the Battle of Azanal Bazaar, it's just in there forever. Or you could just say the Battle of Dimral Dale yeah. if you want to. Indeed. <laughs> um, so why, why Azanal Bazaar? Why Dimral Dale? Um, because I, I think we thought it was a very cool battle from The mm. Hobbit. Because um, at the time that we started putting this together, which is incidentally, if this interests you, we're talking about last August probably. Yes. So thinking before about this. issue one came out, we're thinking about what goes into issue two. Yes. Um, we had not yet seen the Battle of the Five Armies, so mm -hmm. we're just choosing from the first two films, and we felt that um, the Battle of uh, uh, as a null bizarre, which I can't say. Even Didn't write as much as me. <laughs> <laughs> is. Um, yeah, it was was one of the, the it, I think it stands out um, from The Hobbit. Yeah, it's been and we wanted cool. to, we also actually, um, we'll get onto what's in the magazine in a bit, but um, one of the things in there is some alternative profiles for Thor and Thrain, yes. and SBG fact fans, they were actually in SBG issue one, mm. originally. They were meant to be in there just as a one page, try these out, 
and um, when they inevitably got bumped based on space considerations, mm -hmm. and then that became a kind of, well, where do these go? Well, they can go in issue two. Why would they be in issue two? Oh, well, maybe if we theme it around mm -hmm. that battle. And then there was that kind of thing, and using, it was kind of tying into what we were painting. <clears throat> yes. Maybe seeing the new profiles of the young dwarfs a bit. Yeah. And just wanting to kind of, just wanting to do that battle. And so that was the theme. Yes. But it also gave us scope for some... Mm -hmm. Conversion work, not on our part, I must, add. <laughs> yeah. I must add. So, yeah, we were able to thankfully get some awesome people on board who mm. did some incredible stuff for yeah. us. Yeah, we don't write all this. We have one piece each that we write, mm -hmm. and obviously we write the editorial, and then we... How many how many contributors do we have in issue two? Uh, it depends how you count it, but five or six we yes. have up there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of some six sort. Six contributors. So... Um, these contributors will, at the very minimum, write an article, but will also potentially provide other things. Um, but yeah, we don't do everything. We do, you know, edit it, put it in. Um, but a, a lot of what you read is not just us, so there are some other fantastic contributors within the community as well. Indeed. So um, we'll give you, we're obviously not going to show you it because there's no character reference to get it. But at the moment, and as we're recording this, it is. Um, the 12th of May. At the moment, the only way to get your hands on this is by getting a physical copy for us. Yes. Um, so this is available by donating um, £10 to our cause if you're in the UK, £13 if you're in Europe, or £15 if you're in the rest of the world. Yes, and then as a thank you, we will send you out a physical yeah. copy. That includes the postage. So if yes. you want to get if you want to get one of these lovely glossy magazines, that's how you do it. So basically, this just covers the cost of us printing it and posting it to you because um, as much as we'd love this hobby to be huge internationally, it, it still is um, widely followed internationally, but the player base is not yeah. absolutely huge. So our print run is going to be expensive. Yeah, it's, rel it's a relatively small print run. Um, but we're thrilled that it's already in, I think the issue one is in 15 countries, something like that. I'd which is, look at the which is pretty cool. I don't it's know that 15 people are, 15 people, that would be awful. Um, 15 different nationalities are reading this. There's like message boards in Italian discussing it, which I find quite exciting. Yes. Um, so yeah, so if you would like to get a, cop a hold of a copy of that. Um, as before, we will release the PDF for free. Yes. And that is going to go online on Monday the 1st of June. Yes. Um, and the reason we're, uh, we're not delaying it, we're deliberately putting it up later, mm -hmm. is to thank everyone who donated. Yes. So um, basically, anyone who got behind us um, on issue one and has got behind us again on issue two and donated, we want them to have it exclusively for a month yeah. before we put the free PDF yeah. online. But yeah. as of the 1st of June, we'll be putting it online for free as a PDF for you to download, and then you can download it to your heart's content, read it, and send it on to whoever you wish. So we're just that nice. Indeed, we are that nice. Um, so, yeah, and then, of course, there is a donation scheme in there that even if you don't want a physical one, yes. um, if you would like to make a contribution towards us, you know, two pounds, four pounds, whatever, um, that would be gratefully received. And there is an incentive for that. There is an incentive, indeed. Like there was last time, um, we had a competition to win a box of Rivendell Knights, which was run by <gasps> Robert Hawksworth. Yes. Hawksworth, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Of uh, Bolton? Yes, from the north. From the north. I was fine with that, because, you know, they need it. I've <laughs> just got a freezing ice wall up there. Um, Need and different dull nights to yeah. break through that. Oh, the horn of winter. Oh, oh, oh. So on, so forth. Um, but indeed, we do have another competition, and this time, because the theme of the issue is the Battle of Azanolbazar, we have a box of Grimhammers. <laughs> Reflecting the camera. And Thraw. Indeed. So we've got a full war band here for yes. you to... Um, Hopefully, put a force together to start your yeah, own to recreating and to help Nobaza. Yeah, and to help kind of start that if you're wanting to play our scenario, um, that we you'll find out exactly what the forces are in the um, magazine. But yeah, this is the, a good place to start. And you also, I mean, obviously, this Grim is great. I love the model, but the Thor model is stunning. It's, it's a gorgeous model. I've painted it out recently, and you'll see a fair bit of the Thor model inside this issue. Yeah, and for these. We would like to say a massive thank you to uh, JT Noble Indeed. of Awkward Battles, who uh, we are working with on SPG issue 2. Yes, so the back cover of SPG is 
dedicated to JT's store, but he's also it's it's advertising his event, um, the awkward taking of Smaug, which sounds amazing. Saturday, July fourth, and Sunday, July the fifth. I think these prizes are good. At JT's event, the first prize is Smaug. For real. As in the two hundred ninety-five pounds worth of Smaug. So if you do not know about that event, get on it. Yes. Um, um, and so, yeah, so we're working together with JT. Thank you so much, JT, for um, contributing these uh, prizes. Yeah. If you're interested in that event, just comment in the description below and we'll send you all the details. And when we do have now formed an awkward alliance with Awkward mm. Battles, so if you do ring JT up to, um, to, for interest in that event or to um, put in an order, just quote our exclusive little code, Awkward Alliance, and you'll be entered into a draw to win some exclusive Awkward Battle dice. Which will be quite cool. And even if you don't win the dice, you are just helping us out. Indeed you are. And it lets JT know how many people have seen um, his store through the um, through the magazine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there we go. Um, so, yes, that is the incentive to um, kind of get behind us. Um, but hopefully, as the overwhelming response has been from the community, the incentive will also be that people like the product. So, yeah, that was the kind of mentality behind issue two. Mm -hmm. So... What's issue two like compared to issue one? Is Better. It much of the same? No. No. But and yes, yes, yes. and no. Yes. So the the core the core articles are continuing. So much of what you liked in issue one will still be there in issue two. We found that the event reviews, whilst no one gave them negative feedback, didn't get good feedback in quite the same way that some of the other articles did. Mm. So we have removed the edit, um, the event reviews from issue one. Um, well, not remove them from there, but we do not have event reviews in issue two. There was a some of the international readers were saying essentially that um, reasonably enough that printed event reviews mm -hmm. aren't necessarily relevant to them. They they was very much saying they're interesting to read, but mm -hmm. they're not as good as some of the other content. And we, you know, when we were when we were essentially reviewing it after issue one came out, we're going okay, what went well? We immediately were saying, you know what. The event reviews, they're good, but all, I think there were three in issue one. Yeah. All three of them say, we all went here, we played yeah. these games, we had a great time, this person won. Yeah. And it was like, it, it was more suited, I think, to YouTube videos or yes. forum write-ups than we've only got 48 pages, yeah. which isn't a lot. And we want to make sure that every single one of those pages has a lot of reread um, re value. Yeah. Yes. And, and we thought that was an obvious section to replace. Yes, and we've... So what we've done instead is added in more hobby-related material. A lot of feedback asking for yes. more hobby stuff, some scenery stuff and that kind of thing. And uh, we hope that we have delivered. Well, it's not just us who's delivered. No, <laughs> we hope we've got other people to deliver. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to give them a quick foot. Yeah, we can, we can have a run through, I think. And this. Um, by the way, if you prefer your reviews in German, you can check out the <laughs> Hobbit Tabletop Liga. Indeed. Um, Ollie um, from their channel has done a, an excellent review, much better than what we're doing now. He Absolutely. goes through the article. So if you are fluent in German or trying to practice German, I certainly listened to it a few times trying to practice my German and then asked Lily to translate for me. Then, um, yes. Even if you don't speak German, he's probably making more sense than we are. Yes. There's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, truth. But yeah, thanks so much, Ollie, for doing yes. that. Um, we really appreciate you helping us reach an audience that we can't. So mm -hmm. it's much appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. So we have in here, who's this guy? We have a Tom's Top 10 article. We do. Um, this is me back um, talking about undercosted models. This time I'm going to be looking at heroes. Mm. So, yes, if you enjoyed the um, article in issue one, talking about warriors, then <laughs> issue two is concentrating on heroes. It is, and again, to give you credit, people have already said that they enjoyed getting another mm. article back. Yes. Can't really understand that myself. <laughs> um, next up, uh, this handsome guy, uh, there's another article from me, um, which we've, we've kind of almost unintentionally split the magazine into Tom's very scientific and analytic articles and then my bits from the heart. Yeah. So yeah, Tom does the kind of mass thing and then I tell stories, <laughs> tell happy stories. So this time I've written an article about the kind of uh, friendships and relationships that we make on the scene. Yes. And how, uh, how it's good and it's great and maybe it's not quite as it seems. Mm -hmm. That's what my article's about. Yes. Then, 
Then we have a superb article, in my opinion, from Kieran Street. It's all right. Who you'll have seen on the channel before, if you're a regular channel watcher. And he was in issue one's back rep. Yes, and that is of Fluff and Fury. Yes, you'll recognise him from the magazine as oh, yeah. well. Of Fluff and Fury. Um, yes, Kieran was in issue one as well. And he's talking about whether you should or shouldn't, or why you would take a thematic force. Indeed. So Something very close to uh, Kieran's heart. Yes. It's about the pros and cons, and it's a really, really good article. He did a blinded job on that. With some lovely photos as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll come on to the photos when we get to the battle part, I guess. Yeah. <coughs> so next up we have our new scenario for this yes. issue, which is, surprise no one, the Battle of As an Arbazar. So um, obviously in the Desolation Smell um, supplement you do get a three part scenario mm -hmm. for um, fighting out as the Battle of Dimordale, Dimordale. Yep. and we wanted to do one big fight for it. And we've basically been playtesting this for the last sort of six months, yep. on and off like lots of times. And so it's got all the um, kind of all the cool heroes in one scenario. And it's set up the way the kind of special rules work, it's set up for the moments to hopefully play out as yep. they do in the film. Um, and later on in the magazine, we'll be playing it out, and you'll have to see how it went from <laughs> when we actually played it. You know, you do all this playtesting, but you've got one shot yeah. of the battle report in the magazine. There's often the times where you're playtesting, you play it once, you go, that was the one, that's the one we should have yeah. recorded. <laughs> um, but hopefully the battle report is made for an engagement. Really. So yes, I think it's quite, it's quite fun, it's gone both ways in playtesting, <clears> and you get yeah. Thrawn Thrain fighting against Azog and Bog and yeah. stuff, it's pretty And there's an cool. interesting setup as well, which we think kind of adds to the dynamic of the scenario. Yeah, and hopefully, I've heard rumours that we might actually be getting a battle report from Mid-Sussex War Game, mm. which would be very exciting, so check out their channel, as always. Because um, they have done a battle report of our scenario from issue one, which, which yeah, was... Thank um, you. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Like, it's really cool. We did the Out of the Frying Pan we did. Out of the scenario. Frying pan. Which is when Azog is chasing um, Thorin's company to the trees um, just before the eagles rescue them. And it's, um, I just flicked off their channel once and they had a, it's very, very kind of, I don't know, encouraging that other people have taken up your battery and they gave it such a good go as well. Mm. It's a really, really good video. And it's just, it means a lot that people yes. are kind of taking on board the stuff we're putting out. Yes, and actually, um, I got a message via email that someone's tried it out, not with the models as intended that we had, but in a battle company's game. Oh, cool. And said it went really well. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, um, if was... you do get hold of a copy, try out our Battle of Azan Obzor and let us know how it yes. goes. And on the pages after that, this is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. I think we have, I can't show you this for too much. Uh, we have some <coughs> new profiles. Mm. We're going to keep them moving so you can't screen grab them because yes. you know we care about that because we're not going to give it away free in two weeks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we do have new profiles for Thraw and Thrain and uh, mm. the Bad Orc General and Young Barlin. Yes. So why do we do this? Because um, we needed to fill two pages. No, mm. because um, we felt that these four models, so the Gundabad General doesn't have a profile, but then, I mean you can kind of use the Gundabad or Captain as this. So he doesn't have a profile. The Barlin model, um, if you use the old the old Hobbit Barlin profile, it doesn't really reflect him. So those two definitely needed a revamp, in our opinion, to fit the scenario better. Um, and then Thraw and Thrain, we wanted to give a little update just to make them a bit more viable when compared against Thorin. And a bit more like the war gear. Yes. That so uh, it's a long-standing thing that we know that the war gear on Thrawn and Thrain doesn't match their profiles. Yes. So we basically just updated. So Thrawn and Thrain are largely the same, but you just find they're both a bit cheaper, both represent their um, models a bit better. Yeah. And um, we must stress they're not, this isn't for tournament play, this no. is just for friendly games. Um, yeah, it's just some ideas to kind of kick out there, and they're the versions of the profiles that we use in our scenario. Yeah, and if you're playing the scenario, then yeah, you can check out the profiles. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay, um, we then break before we get to the actual battle report itself, and we have yet another tactic article. So last time we had the GBHL boys, James and Jamie, give a brilliant cavalry and anti cavalry article, but this time it's Sam Page of Mid Sussex War Gamers who provided the video, um, who's talking about Azog's Hunters. Uh, again, as you see, we've kind of themed the issue. Mm -hmm. You're kind of hopefully seeing this a bit. We've got a few editorial pieces at the start, and then as soon as the scenario kicks in, the issue then becomes about yeah. Azog's Hunters and Dimmeldale and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, even if you don't collect Azog's Hunters, reading a tactics article about 
as Ox Hunters is still very useful because you're more than likely going to have to come up against them at some mm. point, so it's useful to know what their strengths and weaknesses are. And some of the tactics in there are just good SPG tactics. Yes, they are. But yeah, um, again, really good stuff. Great there. photos in there. This is, I think this is a really nice article. Yeah. And there's a, full, there's a great shot at the end of um, Sam's full army, yeah. which is over a thousand points of Hunter Orcs. Which is cool. So well, not just Hunter Orcs, yeah, but as Ox Hunters. Hunters. Yes. So cool. Cool, and then we get to the big thing. The meat, the thing that people really seem to enjoy. Uh, the which battle was, report. Which was intentional on our part. We, want, we want an old school style battle report that will take you a while to read. And I enjoyed Ollie's way of doing this. He said, a battle report, which is one, two, three, four, five. Is it 12? 13. 13. In the end. 13 pages. There's about a, a, you know, a quarter of the magazine is this big thing. That this time, um, Tom wrote up, to be fair to him, give him credit. Because I was too busy. <laughs> Rolling dice. <laughs> so I was playing um, as as the dwarfs in this. Yeah. Uh, it is our Battle of Aznor with a scenario. So I was playing the dwarfs against Sam. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, as the Azox hunters, and we played out the game. Yeah. And um, it was tons and tons and tons it and went tons of fun. Spectacularly well. Yeah. It's a. I think it's a really good read. I, I really enjoy playing it. But then. Because I wrote it. Yeah. But then um, it's a. I think it makes for an entertaining read, and it's. It's very much in the balance. Yeah, and I chip in with some outside opinions just to kind of say where Damien made mistakes in the battle, that mm. kind of thing. Didn't need them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's um, hopefully good. And that I think, again, some of the feedback we've already had has been that that's been yeah. good. We've we've also deliberately tried to Im improve the look of yes. the barrel Just in the, the, the way the pages are laid out. In that, again, we were learning the first time. Mm -hmm. I think the battle report had a lot of text in it. Obviously, yeah. and now you'll find that the pages should be there's still as much text, but it's mm -hmm. over more pages and it's broken up. And it just yeah. pages look a little more appealing, yes. I think. And we've also tried to make it personal as well because I think in the last one it was just pictures of the in game battle, but now we have reaction shots as yeah, well yeah. of Absolutely. Damien and Sam as the game goes on, indeed. Um, so yeah, that's the bat report. Um, yeah, so big, chunky article, yes. Um, if you're flicking through the magazine, to start with um, there are no spoilers as you're an, as you're going over the pages, there'll be nothing on a double page spread that gives anything away about what's happening in future turns. But if you do go to kind of the post battle game um, double spread, then there'll probably be spoilers for the battle on there. Yeah, and that, that's just like common sense, isn't it? Well, it's just like normal, yeah. You go, but, and, like, you go and watch the end of The Usual Suspects, you'll find out who Kaiser Soze is. Yes, but when I had these magazines previously, and you know, I deliberately kind of Oh, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. The, the battle. Standard barrel report Yes. Um, cool. So then we move on from the kind of playing side and we're on to the hobby section. Mm. First piece in that is a superb painting masterclass. From Mr. Kev Lawrence. <coughs> he's back. DMS, he's back. Uh, he did the white horses last time and this time he is painting Thraw for us. That's it's gorgeous Thraw model. So do, do you see? He's starting to get it. It's about the battle of as long as you can win Thraw and, and learn paint. how to paint him. It's almost like we thought about it for the <laughs> one person who will win this. Um, but for yeah. everyone else, you can have the chance yeah, to buy yourself Everyone else, go out and buy Thraw and then you can paint it. <laughs> um, but he's done, he's done another amazing, mm. um, upsettingly impressive um, painting guide and he looks stunning. And so you can... Um, be inspired by yeah. Kev's awesome. Work. And there's a fair bit of detail in there. There's twenty steps. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, next up, we have a new section. As Tom said, we were a lot of the feedback was that we people wanted to see more of the hobby stuff, and so we have building Middle Earth, which is a terrain article from Rick, who built yeah, Rick Fryer. the frankly stunning Dimmel Dale board. Here it is, in this, all this glory at the bottom. That's the board that uh, <coughs> Rick Fryer very kindly built for us for this issue. Yes. So all the battle report takes place on this incredible custom board that he made. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, we will have some of it at our Seven Stones tournament if you want to come and see some of it in person. Yes. Um, but it was incredible. He did a great job. And there's some there's a great kind of three-page article about how he built it. There's some great scenery tips in there, um, yeah. stuff that I've never done. And even if you're not wanting to do a big Dimble Dale board, you can just try one of the small hills because they're great little gaming hills. Yeah, we actually found that um, if you're watching our Fellowship of the Ring campaign, the main hill that was made for our Dimble Dale Hill is in our Amon Hen Bat Reps mm -hmm. because they're they're really really kind of customizable. So it's not, it doesn't really tell tell you how to make Dimble Dale. It tells mm -hmm. you how to make really good wargaming scenes. 
<laughs> yeah. So that was a great article by him, and thank you so much mm. for the scenery because it was just incredible. Then we go on to a, another kind of cool new article for us. Yes. Which is, uh, again, more hobby stuff. Um, yes, it's um, Conversion Clinic. So we have a custom Azog, as you've seen from the front cover. It is. Look at him! He's got two arms. He's got two arms. And this is, I do declare, there are, there are three Azog models available for sale. This is the best Azog pose there is. Yes. And it's ours. Comment below if you disagree. <laughs> yeah. Um, but why or if would you, you comment agree. if you were wrong? <laughs> um, but, yeah, Dave Fredericks, um, Shadow. Shadow got in on the action. No, Flame, sorry, he's Flame. Yes. Um, Flame got in on the action this time and converted this this stunning, stunning Azog model. And if you want kind of a look into the process of how that was done, there's an article on it. Yeah, so, again, as Rick made the scenery for us, Dave, thank you so, 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 yes. so much for doing this because... The battle report with this figurine really comes to life, and you know, the, again, the the models on the cover and the scenery on the cover. So Rick and Dave, by giving up your time for this, you've the response to the cover when we post the cover is incredible, yeah. and it's largely due to your work. Yes. So thank you so much. Yes. So yeah, if you want to see how Dave went about converting that, and it, yeah. I'm staggered by how I don't have this kind of sculpting skill, but how he takes that. It's the it's the first Azog model that was released, the one going forward with a claw. And how he turns that kind of awkward sculpt into, into this amazingly incredible model is beyond me. One. Yeah. So yep. thank you. And then there's a third person we should kind of give a shout out to in terms of the cover being so well received. Um, Jim Muller did um, the bulk of the photography for the magazine. So all of the battle report shots, a um, lot of the article shots, and of course the front cover shot. Um, we spent a weekend mm. at Jim's house. Um, and <laughs> took an awful lot of photos, which he then processed and we then used. Yeah. So we're taking all the glory for it looking great, but the the photography, if you put issue one next to issue two, the photography is somewhere that the entire thing kind of shoots up, yes. like in in, yeah. in quality, in no end. I mean, we still had some good photos in issue one, um, but. In terms of across the board now, it's not just iPhone shots or things yeah. like that. We've The majority of the photos are now taken in a studio. Yeah. And the, with I think, proper I think lighting. Really uh, the proper lighting is really key. I think the, the battle report photos in particular mm. just look, they look fantastic. So, yes, thank you, Jim. But yeah, there's also one other person who's involved in the cover. That, that is, um, that is goes indeed. On. Yes, so the Azog um, was painted by James Baldwin. Ooh, Murta. Yes, um, who is also kind of, I mean, you'll hear him, hear of him on the channel anyway. Um, but he's given, he's not He's not gone through a whole painting um, step process mm. for the Azog model, but what he has done is highlighted two cool effects that he's made on the Azog. Um, yep. So, blood effect and a rust effect. And he's gone through um, a little hobby tip on how to get those looking as awesome as they do on the Azog. Yeah, so some great little... Kind of just, it's kind of texture, isn't it? Yeah. In a way, it's just creating some texture stuff that um, yeah. looks incredible on it. And so, thank you, James, for yes. this incredible model. There's yeah. actually two conversions. One other secret as of in the issue mm -hmm. that um, Dave converted for us that um, you'll also see. Yes. Um, but James painted both of those for us. So it's, thank you it's so much. Stunning, stunning work. Like absolutely incredible. And again, he you can see him looking on the cover. And <coughs> I think when people saw the cover, the praise was. Kind of three ways going, oh my god, the scenery looks amazing, and then oh my god, that Azog looks amazing, and, oh my god, that Azog paint job looks amazing. So, thank you all to all three of you, yes, um, for doing that. And there's one final thing you've managed to creep, creep in here, I didn't creep in with a um, conversion of the young Barlin model. That's basically just how to convert the young Barlin into the young Barlin profile that we've given him, where he can have a double handed axe. Yes. Um, so, yeah, there's a little bit in there. We've tried to. Um, one of the things we try to do is cram more into it. Yes. Where every little page, rather than just making, putting bigger pictures, we try to put more articles so that you'd have more bits and bobs to get yeah, stuff into. Yeah, it'll take you a while to read through. I mean, it takes an awful long time to copy edit, but yeah. it'll take you a while to get through this. Absolutely. Um, so then um, sitting in we, are, we are sadly at the end, and we get to um, our hobby blog page, just yes. filling you in on what six of the contributors have been up to recently. Yes. Um, <coughs> how, how to support us, which we've already taught you through. And then we get to kind of JT's advert. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a kind of brief run through. As I said, all those articles will take you a while. There's a lot in there. Um, I was immensely proud of issue one. And 
I promise you this is better. Yeah. And I'm glad to say, because obviously we're in yeah. Scotland it completely, so you're always going to think that, but yeah. the feedback is over, people began not to say, I didn't, I liked issue one, but this is much better. Yeah. So if you did enjoy issue one, um, I think you'll love this. It's, yeah. it's, all, it's more of the stuff you loved yeah. and a lot more as and well. I, it, these are good quality prints that we, that we get. We don't just print it off on mm. shabby paper. It's on proper magazine glossy paper. It's heavy. Yeah. It's proper. It feels good. And um, if, we do, if we do post stuff, we always send it in a hardback envelope to make mm -hmm. sure it gets to you safe and sound. And one of the rather exciting things for us, given that we launched it at the Destination Stockport, which was end of April? Yes. Um, <coughs> is that we actually got, we got twice as many of these done as we did for issue one, and half, over half of them have gone already. Yes. So thank you so much. So much. Yeah. The, um, the response has been incredible already. Yeah, over half have gone. Yeah. So well, obviously that goes without saying that um, you know to, it's not going to go out of production. You know we we would likely get more if there's demand for it. But just to let you know, if you do want to get your hands on one, get in there because otherwise yep. we don't know when we'll get any more. No. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. And on the similar note, if you yes. still have not managed to get yourself a copy of issue one and you are interested, we have seven left. I yeah, believe. we are running. Dangerously yeah, low. Of issue one. And we, we kind of said that that was going to be the last one. It may end up being yeah. the last one. So we may just have seven copies left ever. Because you have to buy a reasonable bulk to be able to um, print them. Yeah. So yeah, if you want issue one, we can get. So yes, that is issue two. We, we hope you like it. It's out there. Yes. Um, you can, as we said, donate. Um, the details will be below again on how to mm -hmm. do that. Um, but um, hopefully people kind of know this by now. Um, we <coughs> are so proud of it. Um, the two of us worked our little bodies off on this for a long time now, and I think it's a lot better than issue one. Yes. I don't. There is. There are now. There are going to be more. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a moment. But it's not to say the next one won't be better than this one. But mm -hmm. I sort of feel like we had issue one, which yeah, is here, and now we've gone up to here, enough. and now we'll maintain that. Yeah. Because I think we've we figured out what worked in issue one and what didn't. Yes. And now I personally humbly think that everything's working in issue two, and that we've got we've kind of found our formula, yep. as it were. Yeah. Speaking of, issue three will happen. Yes. Issue three is happening. It's happening. Yeah. But you're not allowed to know about it. We're working on it. Yeah. Other people are working on it. It's very exciting. You know who you are. Nobody else does. And the thing is, as well now, because of. It's not the same people, so you can't yes. go and harass them in the pub and get no. them drunk. But <laughs> obviously now you know we're asking other people. So mm. whenever you go to an event, like you can have a look around the room, and there's going to be people there who are working away for your entertainment yes. on something. Yes. Um, so issue three is well underway, is. as is the nature of how we have to do this, unfortunately. Um, and will yeah. be released this year. Yes. Yeah. With it will come out this year. Yeah. Um, we may we, not hit the Stockport tournament. No. It's an bit, there's a there was a seven month gap to the um, desolation of Stockport, and then only a five month gap. So we are aiming for that, but logic would say if it takes as long as this one did, then it comes out in December. Yeah. Like that's that's the reality of it. But who knows? It depends how. I mean, we are we are we are getting stuff done though. Mm -hmm. So we're working away on it. Um, but as ever, our mantra is it'll be ready when it's ready. Yes. It might well be out in September. It might well be out in March. It'll be out when it's as good as this one is. Because we could get it out to you a month or two early, but the formatting inside would not quite be there. There'd yeah. be typos and... I think people will be areas. amazed to see the version of this that existed two months before we launched it. Yeah. Like quite the different. You know, everything's still there. Yeah. But the difference in appearance is huge. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so issue three is happening, and you know what? Issue four is also in the planning stage. Yes. Like, feelers have been put out for issue four, so yes. we are now committed to the project. Um, yes. But that only continues if you keep donating. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. As, um, if people stop reading it, then we'll stop making it. And please, please, please do send us your feedback to sbgmagazine at gmail.com or comment below. Um, because we do take on board your feedback as we have by expanding the hobby section and David said we think it's at a very good level now but if there are any suggestions you do have or um, things that you liked, things that you didn't like particularly 
please let us know and we'll try to take that on board. Absolutely. So, yes, it is out there. Please help us uh, to make the third one and enter yourself into a competition to win the Grim Hammers and Thrall. Uh, thanks so much to all. Did we explain how that works? Yes. Every two pounds. Oh, every two pounds. No, we didn't. No. Um, do you want to do that? Yes. So, every, for every two pounds that you donate, um, you will be entered into the raffle draw for the prizes. And um, so, if you were to give five pounds, then that's you get two tickets because that's two pounds, two pounds for four. Um, to get the third ticket, you'd have to give a donation of six pounds. So if you want it posted to you in the UK, it costs you ten pounds, which means you get five entries into the draw. Yes, as well as your copy. Yeah, it's not additional. So yeah, any donation you make, if you're if you're the rest of the world, so it costs you fifteen pounds, that will get you seven entries into the draw. You can, of course, donate more if you wish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then we will. Oh, we did say that competition will run until. Oh yes the 31st of August this year, yes. 2015. That'll be over to After that, of course, we will still take donations. We still, we'll still send copies out. Yeah. But that's when we will um, draw a winner for uh, this prize. Yes. All so, the details are in the magazine. Right? Absolutely. Um, so finally, just a massive thank you to everyone who kind of helped us out with this. Uh, our various contributors of Jim Muller, James Baldwin, Dave Frederick, Rick Fryer, Kev Lawrence, Sam Page, Kira Street, uh, James Clark, Tom Macklin and Peter Middleton <coughs> have all had something to do with this issue. Yes. As has my mum, who proofread it, and um, Emma and Lily, who yes. constantly put up with us. Thank you um, very much yeah, to cheers. everybody. Um, and thank you as well to you, anyone who supported us in the first issue and made it happen. Yes, we, definitely. It's a, it's a tough thing to do, but we genuinely enjoy it and we appreciate you giving us this chance. So there you go. Yeah. There is SPG issue two. It's out there in the world. We hope you enjoy it as much yes. as we enjoy making it. So, as, as ever. ever. Yeah. Don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Um, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Support your Hobbit hobby. And happy strategy battle game. And get this. Get, I mean, get that. <laughs> get it. It's really good. Get it. Please. Please. On this if you want. Get that as well. <laughs>